Uh, greetings all and welcome back to Globich Gaming Channel. Um doing a little, little bit of quick tank review on a tank that to be perfectly honest with you, um I didn't think I was gonna like. Uh and it's this thing. Alright? The VK three thousand and one H, which is the German tier five heavy tank. That's right, a tier five heavy tank. Um Quick stat review first. It's got 660 hit points, which if you compare it to, for example, the KV-1, which has 640. Now, that's a German thing, okay? The Germans tend to have a little bit more health than any other nation. That's their thing. All right, so 660 hit points is a healthy amount of hits that it can take um, before it gets knocked out. So 660 is pretty good. 37 tons, a total weight limit of 41 tons, pushed around by a 400 horsepower engine, giving it a top speed of 35. Well, that's heavy tank stats. Um, a traverse speed of 22 degrees a second, which again is a heavy tank turning speed. The problem is, though, it hasn't got heavy tank armor. Um, a KV-1, which is the Russian tier 5 uh, heavy tank, has... 75 millimeters at the front, 75 millimeters side, 70 millimeters at the front, at the rear, sorry, at the front, mm. at the rear. This thing has 50 millimeters all round. Um, this thing can see KV2, which can penetrate it with its HE ammunition. Um, so it hasn't got heavy tank hull armor, and being typically German, it's flat, okay? So you need to take into account angling. Uh, and its lower glacis is the size of a continent. Um, even to the point where they've decided, somebody's decided to bolt a length of track onto the front of it to try and give it a little bit of extra help. Um, but I don't think that's actually affected in the game. That's just cosmetic. So angling, you're not going to be fighting corners and sides grabbing this thing. The turret armor isn't much better. 80 at the front, 60 at the side, 60 at the rear. The KV-1 is 110 all round. So this is not a heavily armored heavy tank. Um... So that's the armor. The view range, 360. Not bad view range. Uh, the rate of fire, I'm not going to worry about that too much. The turret traverse is 24. So coupled with the traverse speed of the hull, you can get 36 degrees a second. So that's not too bad. Uh, the signal range is 710 meters. Uh, my equipment fit, I go for standard issue consumables, first aid kit, repair kit, fire extinguisher. You've got to have a fire extinguisher. German. Um, I go for rammer, vents, and binos. You could argue and go for, I don't know, what could you maybe go for? Different to this. You could maybe go to grousers. Not really an issue, though. Uh, maybe a heavy spore liner if you come against HE. But to be honest with you, for 500,000, you may as well spend it on something else. Um, I basically got had these components kicking around. You could probably go for a gun lane drive. Uh, but I'll show you why that's a bad idea in a minute. Uh, the selection of guns that this thing can have. You've basically, looking at the research tree... You've got a choice of two, and there are arguments for both. You've got this one, which is the L70, all right, and this one, which is the, well, for the old school ones amongst you, the Konish. Now, personally, I like the Konish. All right, let's put the two guns side by side. You've got a couple of choices here. Now, I go for the Konish. I use this one for the simple reason, okay, the rate of fire is slightly quicker than the L70. All right, the penetration, the sod all in it. Um, same damage, a little bit more pen, hardly anything in it though. The Konish is slightly more accurate with exactly the same aiming time, and it weighs slightly less than the L70. So I'm not being funny. It will make a slight bit of difference um, to the acceleration of the thing, but it's, it's negligible. It's that extra 0.5 rounds a minute and the extra pen for me, and it's a little bit more accurate. Now, there's, there's two ways to look at it. Um, the L70 is the same gun as you get on the... Uh, I think you get it on the Stug. I'm not sure. Let me just have a look at the Stug. I think it's the Stug. I know there's a list of vehicles on here, but I think you get the L70 on the Stug. Uh, let's have a look. Where's the Stuggy? Stuggy, Stuggy, Stuggy. Yep, there you go. Pack 42, L70. All right, so you can get it on the Stug 3. All right, it's that legendary Stug gun, which it never actually had. Um, stupidly rapid firing, high DPM. But personally, I go for the Konish. You've got a choice of two, though. Um, I'm not sure on the ammunition cost, but the thing is, you're not going to be shooting HE with an L70. All right, and if you want to shoot gold, if you carry some, which I don't, um, the gold ammunition is a little bit better on the 
Kodish gun. So that's the reason for this tank. It's got a really high DPM, which in this game I'm going to show you and put to work. Um, this game was an absolute heartbreak. <laughs> Stand by. Here goes. And here we go then. We're on Himmelsdorf, street fighting map. Okay, and I'm in the Panzer 3001H. And we're in a tier 5 game. Um, half the team is tier 5. Seven of the teams tier 5. The rest are tier 3 and tier 4s. Bless them. And it looks like I'm the best player on the game. So it doesn't bode well for our team. Uh, I'm playing tuned up with Phoenix and Dave. Um, Phoenix is not going to want you to see this replay in any way, shape or form. Um, mainly because of something that happened very early on. Um, pay particular attention to that grill. Or the gorilla. Okay, so the first thing I decide, I'm a heavy tank, so I'm going to go to the hill. There's a T14, an M7, and a Matilda, and a couple of Panzer IVs on the enemy team. Not going to be a problem whatsoever. Right, with my crew set up, four second reload. Thanks for that, Panzer IIA. Um, and the B1's going to get him away as well. I I'm not the fastest tank in the game. Uh, and the Churchill's going to get him away as well. And this is the kind of game, I just put my head in my hands and thought, you know what? I just don't care anymore. I'm going to drive up to this hill and I am going to ruin anybody that gets up here. Now, remember what I said about Phoenix not wanting you to see this game? Keep an eye on him. There he is. In his T-34. Right there. He's at the top of the hill. He's at the top of the hill. He makes it to the hill. <laughs> now then. Any of you play artillery in this game, this is what you need to do. Pre-aim for this spot here. And Dave's dead as well. Not a good start for the Globs platoon. So, let's act, enact a bit of revenge. Let's start brassing these idiots up. Let's start blowing them to bits. Now, I'm not going to start shooting down that lane there. I've got a Matilda, a Panzer 4H. And I've got these two in comms, right? Telling me, oh, you're screwed. You want to see what's around this corner. And Phoenix, to his credit... It does actually say GG to the grill. Uh, I've got four enemy tanks coming around this corner. That one shot into the H. Not a problem. He hasn't got very good gun depression. Enemy and he keeps coming. Here. Hopefully I'll reload. But now we've got a Matilda. Now the Matilda's a problem. High DPM on the Matilda. I'm checking. I'm checking. I've got to prioritise Matilda. Oh, bounced off the Matilda. Did a crit, but I don't know what I actually critted. Oh, shooting the gun mantlet. Trolley gun mantlet. And the pain starts. But, I out DPM him. Two shots, three shots, and he's dead. Get shot by a T70, don't really care about him. But I put a shot into him anyway. It's the Panzer 4H I need to worry about. It gives me his side, which is nice of him. Look at my hit logs going absolutely mental. I've got a Panzer 2G and a T70, and there's more coming around that corner. I've got to get these guys killed as quickly as possible. Get around the back of me. I don't think that Panzer 2G is actually heavy from there. T70, finish him off. Gotcha. And I've just run out of friends up here. I'm alone. I'm not going down without a fight though. I'm on four kills. I've done 1300 damage. I'm just going to ruin these guys. I'm getting told by my guys to push forward because the T14 is coming after me. So I have to push into the enemy guns. Kill the H. Come on, kill the H. Why he wasn't packing derp, I'll never know. He should have been. He would have killed me if he had been. And... Weak spot. There we go. Beautiful. So. Eight, six kills. And there comes a cruiser three. Or cruiser two. Dude. Go away. <laughs> Seriously. That pulls me up to seven kills. We're being capped. And there's two of us left. Great. We're losing 13-9. Seven of which of those kills I actually did myself. Not a good omen so far. And the Mod of Theater takes out the Stuart, but then gets taken out in return. Okay. This is my first ever Kolobanov's opportunity. Okay, there are five remaining tanks on the enemy team, and I'm on my own. I've got 282 hit points left. I'm pissed off. I've got 26 rounds. And I'm going to go for it. Uh, make a little joke with the team. This is Sparta. Does anyone else want to have a go? Basically, I killed everything that came up that hill. Uh, I'm not saying I did it alone, but yeah. <sighs> what to do? Now, in this situation, looking back, I was not really interested. I was at a stage in my World of Tanks career where I basically was getting a bit despondent with the game. I do manage to spot the T14, 
the strongest tank on the team, and take him out. And I'm even getting a nice job from the enemy as well, which is nice. Now, they know where I am. I've definitely been spotted. I don't have six cents on this tank. All right. They definitely know where I am. Now, this is where I make a monumental cockle. I spot the T-49. I need to shoot two shots into him. I donk my shot. This is the big issue. Now, what I should have done there was carried on fighting him in this corner. But they say hindsight is 2020. I take a shot from him for nothing in return, but it bounces, thankfully. It bounces off the gunman. And then I do not know for the life of me what I was trying to do here. Um, big, big mistake. I was hoping to loop round, but then I realised to myself, that's a T-49, Globs. He's a lot quicker than you, and there's artillery. I should have just kept driving. Take out artillery. But, oh, who's next? Oh, shit, Ags. He's going to out DPM me. Need to get in one more shot. Bollocks. <laughs> oh, absolute heartbreak. Let's look at the post game stats on that. Well,. That's what Kolobanov's opportunity looks like in the post-game stats, ladies and gents. I will admit I went away and had a little bit of a weep after that game. I was broken. Absolutely broken. Hats off to the T-49 driver, though he did exactly what he needed to do. Um, got myself a cool-headed, survive at least 10 ricochets, non-penetration hits in a row. Well, if you're getting people shooting at you with machine guns, you're going to get that thing a lot. Radley Walters, high calibre and a top gun. Um, yeah, over a thousand experience more than anybody on the enemy team or anybody on the any team. I got more experience than anyone in that game, and I was on the losing side. Um, I really, really, really like this vehicle. Uh, it's cheap to fix, which is always good. Ammunition is reasonably cheap, and it penetrates, it does its job. You know, with a little bit of skill, you know, sprinkling of you know magic, as it were, it, you can make this little tank work. I'm really thoroughly enjoying it. And after the DW2, the douche wagon, it's a welcome break. So keep grinding through that douche wagon, guys. Yeah, there is a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Uh, and it's in the form of this little beast. Hope you enjoyed that, guys. A little bit of a garage review. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you next time. Bye now.